Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Making a Game in the Desmos Graph and Calculator series. Last time we covered improving the time variable and creating some new types of enemies. In this video, I'll implement the shooting enemy and coins for the player to collect. To begin, let's add a shooting enemy. Basically, he'll be a rolling enemy, but with a gun. I want him to fire two random shots at the player. I chose for his first shot to go off when he's 20 units away from the player, and the second shot to go off when he's 15 units away. These seem like solid distances for him to shoot, where the player is both challenged, but still has time to react. His bullets will make to be fast moving circles. These are both easy for me to implement and simple shapes that the player can easily understand and predict. Now we can easily add circles into the game, but finding what direction they should go in is a bit more challenging. I found that we can use the random function in Desmos to generate a random number between zero and one. We can use this number to change the slope of our bullet. Zero will represent the minimum angle for the bullet to shoot at, and one will be the maximum angle. Now this is good, but what even are the minimum and maximum angles to shoot at? The minimum angle is actually pretty straightforward. I don't ever want a bullet shooting into the ground, so the minimum angle is going to be zero, where it flies tangent to the terrain. The maximum angle is a bit more tricky to calculate. Now, the maximum height we ever want a bullet to go is 11 units, since that's the maximum height the player can ever jump to. Anything above that would be basically a wasted shot. If we remember that j1 squared was our jump constant that dictated how high the player could jump, this total distance we can write as z over 2 plus j1 squared plus z or the radius of the enemy, plus the height of the jump, plus the radius of the player. We also know that the x distance to the player is 20 minus z over 2 units, since we're shooting from 20 units away. Since we want the enemy to shoot from his front and not his center though, we have to subtract the radius of the enemy from 20 to give us our corrected distance. We can combine the x and y distances we just solved for to make a slope for the bullet to travel on. We know that the slope is the rise over the run, and since we know the rise in the run, we can get our maximum slope. Now that we know the maximum minimum angles, how can we use the random function to vary the slope of the bullet? Well, we can multiply our maximum slope by the random value to get a random path for the bullet to travel. If the random number is zero, or its minimum, you see that the bullet's slope is gonna be zero as well. If the random number is one, or the maximum, you see that the slope is gonna be the maximum we just solved for. I created a test variable, n, which is pretending to be the random variable. You see that as a very n, the slope moves within its designated range. So this is what we want, but how do we use the random slope to make a bullet follow the designated path? Creating a line for the bullet to travel on is the next step. If you consider y equals mx plus b, we know m, or the slope, but we don't know what b is, or the y-intercept of the graph. Fortunately, we know that the bullet will always originate from the front of the enemy here, which is a point that our line will always intersect with. We can plug our slope and point into point-slope form, and get a line for the enemy to travel on. We still need a way for the bullet to appear when the enemy is 20 units away, though, and for that, I'll use our old friend, piecewise functions. We can find when the enemy is 20 units away by calculating his x equation, which in this specific case is 30 minus 2t. This value is going to change depending on each enemy that is added, since the starting x position for every enemy is different. Here we can say that if 30 minus 2t equals 20, or the x position of the enemy is equal to 20, then begin showing the bullet. Cool, but when should the bullet disappear? We actually don't need to stop showing the bullet at any specific time, so we can just say that if the bullet is at x equals negative 30 or less, which is outside of the player's view, stop showing the bullet. This way Desmos can do less work since there's no point drawing something that the player can't even interact with. The last thing we need to do is formally write the final equation for the bullet. To begin, I'll rewrite the y position equation for the bullet. Next, I'll create a circle equation, add in the x and y offsets, as well as the conditions for the circle to be drawn. I'll make a few shooting enemies here for you to see how the bullets work. You see that as the enemy gets 20 units away from the player, he shoots. Also, you see that as the enemy gets 15 units away, he fires a second shot. The process to make this work is almost exactly the same as making the enemy shoot at 20 units, so I decided not to cover the exact same thing twice. Alright, now that the shooting enemy is added, I think all the main enemies of the game have been added in. The next thing to add is coins, which I want to be an optional challenge. Coins are just going to be circles that disappear if the player touches them. A counter will appear in the top right of the screen that shows the number of coins collected. I think that there will be roughly 3-5 to five coins in the whole game, in various states of difficulty to obtain. Once again, we know that the circle collision is easy enough to add, but if you want a refresher you can check out the video up here. The real interesting mechanics of coins are how we store that a coin has been collected and how we display it. Actually, we covered how to store data in the video on screen now, but if you forget, we just need to use some basic trickery of sliders. What we'll say is if the player has intersected the coin, save that as a boolean. If that boolean is triggered, stop showing the coin and add one to the coin counter. Here I'm implementing that over my voice. I'm only going to add in one coin for now as a proof of concept. Next episode, when I create the terrain mechanics and design the map, I'll create the locations of all the enemies and coins. 
Once that's decided, I can make real headway on the final equations for everything. All right, you can see in the upper right now, we have a zero. I'm writing that digit using a point. For every coin I have, I also have an invisible point with a label. I can select which point to show based on how many coins I've collected. As I touch the coin, you see that it disappears and it counts in the upper right. Thanks for watching. Make sure to tune in next time for terrain mechanics and laying out the level. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time.